These are makeup hacks that everyone needs to know and you might find some new ones in here that you've not heard of before. So stay tuned and let's get right into it. So I'm really excited about this video because I think there may be some hacks in here that you haven't heard of. I'm not sure, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. I'm excited to see how you guys feel about these and whether you use them. Cause I feel like all of them are hacks that you can use and that they're doable. They're kind of like realistic, you know, not these silly hacks you see. There's some hacks that you see and you're like, why would I even, why would I do that? Why would I even put that on my face? But this here is a list of very reasonable, realistic hacks. So let's get started. As you can see, I don't have any base on. I've still got a little bit of kind of lip line on eyes are done and brows are done but otherwise we don't have anything on the skin so i'm going to get started with the first one and that is when you come to applying your concealer this is something that's really going to help especially if you're using a fluid kind of concealer now the concealer i'm going to use is the ysl all hours concealer and this is in mw9 and i'm just going to get some of this on the back of my hand now, what you wanna do is get a beauty blender. You've gotta make sure that it is a damp beauty blender. That part is very important, that it is a damp beauty blender. And if you don't know what that is, then what you need to do is put your beauty blender, which by the way, is an actual beauty blender, not just any random sponge. It's the actual beauty blender, like the brand beauty blender. You've gotta put this under running water and then you wanna make sure that you keep squeezing it until it doubles in size. And when it doubles in size, you're gonna squeeze all of the water out. You're gonna get a tissue. You're gonna wrap it around that beauty blender. You're gonna squeeze again so it soaks up all the excess water that didn't come out on that first squeeze that's when your beauty blender is ready and damp. Next, what we're gonna do is use setting spray, but not just any setting spray. This one in particular is a game changer. This is the one size on till dawn mattifying waterproof setting spray. This spray is probably the best setting spray out of all the setting sprays that I've used. Half the time I don't actually believe that they do much, but this is the one that I think that actually does do what it says. If there's any setting spray I think works, I would say this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to spray the beauty blender. So we're going to make sure we kind of like get a decent amount on there, not too much. While that's damp from that setting spray, we're going to go into this concealer and you are gonna see a complete change in how this applies. We're gonna go ahead and apply this on the under eye. Guys, I cannot begin to tell you how amazing your concealer goes on with this technique. I mean, look at that. I just wanna say something. That concealer on its own, with no setting spray on the sponge, with just applying it as normal, does not look like this. Honestly, this is amazing. It does not go on like this. This is a very fluid concealer that personally on its own, I feel like doesn't give you the best coverage. But when you apply this using the setting spray, so you get a slight dampness to it again, you then go into the concealer on the back of the hand, it completely changes the consistency. Oh my God. I'm telling you, this concealer does not look like this on its own. You probably haven't actually seen me use this that often. And if I do, it's always for like a no makeup makeup look because I don't feel like the coverage is the best for that concealer. But if you have any other concealer at home that you feel just doesn't give you the coverage you want, you've got to try this technique. It's a complete game changer. This is going to totally change the way that your concealer looks on. And immediately, by the way, it doesn't crease. So there are so many different benefits to this hack. Number one is it changes the consistency of your concealer. It changes the application. It changes how it looks on the skin. It literally applies and then looks immediately like it's already set. And also you won't get the creases. This is, this is an amazing hack. This has to be one of the best hacks. There are still so many amazing hacks coming up, by the way. This isn't just about using any setting spray. This is about these kind of exact products. This in particular and this in particular. You've got to be using a beauty blender which is damp in exactly the way that I told you how to dampen it. And then you want to be using this one size on till dawn setting spray, this exact one, right? So I don't want anyone coming to me saying, oh, but I've got setting, this setting spray, will it work? No, I'm going to tell, I'm giving you the answer now. No, it's not going to work. This is what works the best. So hopefully you try that because honestly, I think you're gonna love it. Like already I can see there's no creases because this works so well. I cannot even begin to tell you how amazing this hack is. Now, whatever's left on the sponge, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of 
apply in other areas. Okay, loving that. Okay, so this next hack is something that works really well if you have kind of, I would say combination potentially, but definitely dry skin and definitely mature skin. So it works so well for this. So use your foundation and you wanna be applying a little bit of a hydrating oil in the foundation and creating a good texture before you actually apply it to the skin. So we're gonna be using the Drunk Elephant A Glowy, Glowy, I don't even know how you pronounce that. I'm just gonna put it on the screen. You can use any oil that suits your skin. This is actually a retinol oil, so, you know, use the one that you feel. I'm gonna put a couple of drops of this in the palm of my hand, and then I'm gonna get my Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation, and this is a long wear foundation. I always find that long wear foundations can sometimes look a little bit cakey. I'm not saying that this one in particular looks cakey. This is just what I have to hand, with the only long wear one I've got sitting here, but generally some. Can you see I've mixed that on the palm of my hand? And it will give you the most amazing texture. The application to this is obviously after you've applied your primer, all that kind of stuff. You don't have to be applying this onto your skin. I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend applying this on top of your primer. So when you, whenever you apply your foundation. Now, when it comes to applying, I'm actually gonna include another hack into this because it kind of is two in one. You don't have to do it with this, but this is when I'm gonna show you it. So it's basically using a powder puff as your foundation applicator. So I've got a puff here. This is the Makeup Forever one. I've got a little puff here. I'm gonna go into my hand and apply the foundation to the puff. And now we are gonna buff it into the skin. Can you see that really nice glow? That's the oil in the foundation, which is gonna really help with the finish of your foundation because if you've got dry skin, this is gonna be a game changer for you. And obviously the hack when it comes to applying your foundation with a powder puff, I have a feeling a lot of you may prefer applying foundation with a powder puff compared to a sponge. It, for those of you who maybe feel that, you know what, I can't keep going out and buying a beauty blender, it might be expensive for you, or, you're not finding the right sponge, just get a pack of kind of powder puffs. They've got to be velour puffs, by the way. Make sure they are velour puffs. Get them online, get a pack of them and use these as your makeup application. So like to apply your foundation. Like, look at that, look at that glow that I've already got everywhere. Obviously, this is not about getting a glow. This is, it can be, by the way, it can be, but this is more so about really making sure you get the most amazing finish that doesn't look cakey for dry skin or mature skin. So that's that next hack, including an extra hack in there for you guys. I am just gonna kind of press some powder on, just so that we can mattify certain areas. And you can still do this, by the way, if you have dry skin. Like, I'm not saying apply the foundation this way and then you just leave it. Like, you can still kind of, like, mattify it. And I guess that's what I'm really trying to kind of explain here, is that if you have dry skin or mature skin and you feel like you want that hydration but you also want your foundation to be matte, this is honestly going to be a game changer for you because what you're doing is you're applying a foundation which basically is infused with oils, good oils that are good for your skin, but then you're actually locking it in with the powder. So you know how you usually wear a long wear foundation and then you lock it in with powder and then immediately or even later on in the day it starts to look maybe quite cakey, quite dry, and it just doesn't look good? This technique, this hack of mixing your face oil in with your foundation, make sure it's a long wear foundation so that you know you're gonna get that coverage as well, like a medium to full coverage finish. This is gonna actually infuse that extra hydration into your skin that you need that maybe you're not getting. Maybe a moisturizer alone and even a hydrating serum alone underneath isn't doing the job because maybe when you're applying your makeup, it's drying everything out. So what we're actually doing is making sure that the makeup we do apply doesn't dry out the skin because we're infusing it with that oil and then we're locking it in. So it's kind of like this 
it's just this way of kind of really locking in the moisture with your skincare, but then you're also locking in more moisture with your foundation to ensure that nothing's actually drying it out. And then when you've pressed powder over it, you're locking all that moisture in. So you've still got that slight kind of like nice healthy glow, but it isn't shiny and it's locked in and it's gonna stay like that. Okay, so I'm gonna take off what I've got on my lips because I wanna show you another hack, which I think you guys are gonna like. Totally dry my lips out. We're gonna apply a lip balm. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you this hack. I've got my Rode Peptide Lip Treatment. And apply it over the lips, mainly in the center, because that's usually where we start to feel that kind of dryness, because everything kind of blend, like seeps outwards a little bit over time. Now I'm gonna blot it, but I'm not taking it off. So if I go like that, I can still feel the lip balm. The lip balm is, is more than enough there. It's just not overly glossy. Now what you wanna do is get your powder puff or even a tissue if you want. And you just wanna dip into your powder. So you can go into your loose powder. I've just got a tissue here. We're gonna powder the lips. So all of that lip balm is now locked in, there's powder on top, so it's gonna stay hydrated. And when you do this, by the way, you'll be surprised at how it really doesn't feel dry at all. It's like, you can still feel the lip balm, but you can't go like that, if that makes sense. So next, what we're gonna do is line our lips. So we can do our lipstick, and I'm gonna be using my Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude. I like to just smudge it a little bit, but that's up to you. You can use any lipstick. I'm gonna use my Simi Haze Velvet Blur Matte Lipstick in Sahara. And I'm just gonna go over like that. And then I like to use my finger to just buff it in. Honestly, your lipstick isn't gonna go anywhere. This is gonna keep your lipstick on all day and it's not gonna feel dry. It's just gonna feel like super hydrated but it doesn't look hydrated so that's your little hack there if you want to use a matte lipstick or you want a lipstick which doesn't look so glossy but you still want it to feel hydrated underneath but with something good that like your usual lip balm then this is the hack that you can use so this hack is something that i do quite often not very often, but every now and again I do do it because it's something that I've been doing for years. And it is amazing because what it does is it helps your matte makeup that is gonna stay put all day to look healthy. So it just, you know when you first apply your makeup and everything's matte because you know that you need it to kind of, the only way that it's gonna stay all day is by doing matte makeup and you fully need to powder it down. You know what I'm talking about, right? When you first do your makeup and everything looks a bit too matte and it's just too fresh, it's like, wow, you just did your makeup. This is what helps that look healthy and not look so matte and maybe cakey. Before you have a shower, you wanna wash your face, double cleanse, do whatever you gotta do, right? Wash your face properly, do everything you usually do. Then what you're gonna do is do your makeup. You're gonna apply your makeup, do your nice matte finish. Don't worry about, oh, it looks a bit too cakey or anything like that, or, you know, but the problem is it looks cakey, but it's gonna last all day. I don't know what to do. Just do it as normal. Do it how you do it, that when you know that this is gonna stay put and it's not gonna budge. Then once you've done that, you're gonna go have a shower, but what you want, or, or you can just put the shower on hot water. If you wanna have a shower before you can do that, it doesn't mean that you have to have a shower after, but you just wanna make sure that you have that steam in the shower. So what you wanna do is go into the shower. It's probably difficult if you have not done this before, you know, like, cause it's hard to not get it on your face. I have not had a problem with that. I'm, it works fine for me. But if you feel like, how am I gonna do this? If this sounds bizarre to you, then you're better off having a shower first. But then what you wanna do is go into the shower, just turn the like shower on to get the steam. I'm just saying that having a shower after means that you save water so that you're not kind of wasting it. So the steam from the shower, make sure you shut the door. The steam from the shower is really gonna help to kind of like just soften everything up. But at the same time, it's still gonna last 
all day. It honestly is a game changer with how your makeup looks, especially if you have dry skin or you have mature skin or generally you want your kind of like matte finish to, to not look so matte and you look want it to kind of like look a little bit more lived in. So that is the next hack, which I think is going to be amazing for you. And I think you're going to love it. And I've actually seen that some other people do this. I have heard that a few celebrities do this and I've heard a couple of other makeup artists who have spoken about this. Like it really does work wonders on your skin. It makes your makeup look amazing, just really healthy. Okay, so this next hack is something that I feel like works really well if you want that kind of nice natural glow and you have maybe powder highlighters or maybe you don't use them anymore because there's so many nice kind of highlighters out now. And I feel like sometimes what happens is you, you kind of like end up having all these old products that people just don't use anymore. So this is what I want to show you is how you can still use powder highlighters that you may think are a little bit too powdery or too chunky or too kind of like just shimmery, how you can use it so that it doesn't look so bad, but you can still utilize the product and not waste it. So what you want to do is get your damp beauty blender. Again, make sure it is damp and make sure, you know, it's a good quality sponge. I personally prefer the, the uh, Beauty Blender ones. And you wanna get a powder highlighter. So this one is the Charlotte Tilbury powder highlighter and it is the Pillow Talk Multi Glow. You wanna get a damp sponge. I'm gonna get a different sponge because I don't wanna use the same one that I use on my foundation. Get a damp sponge and we're gonna go into this powder like this and we are gonna just press. And this way, you're gonna get that really nice glow come through, but it actually somehow diffuses it. So it doesn't look so kind of like powdery as what it normally does. You know, when you apply it with a brush, it just looks a lot more kind of like lit from within. It's like not so chunky. So we're gonna go ahead and do the other side. I honestly feel like this is the best way to apply powder highlighters. You can still use them because at one point I was thinking, well, I've got so many powder highlighters. I don't really like brushing it on with a brush because it just looks a little bit too much. And I found that this is the perfect way to apply them because it just stops it from looking so obvious and it just looks more like it's melting into the skin. Okay, so the next hack is something I actually do probably on a daily basis and I love it. You wanna get a brow pen, so something which is like medium brown. I like this one which is the Rodial brow pen in medium brown. And I'm basically gonna draw in my freckles. So wherever I have my sunspots, freckles all over my face, I'm gonna go over them to enhance them because your makeup ends up covering everything up and it's really hard to have them come through and still look natural. The other thing is, this is why this hack is good, is I have seen people kind of apply, like using a brow pen and then enhancing their kind of freckles and everything, but they've used a very dark brow pen, or even when they've used a medium brown, it looks so obvious that you've kind of dotted a pen all over your face. So I feel like this is the best way that I've found that it looks natural. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually just kind of apply this everywhere that I need it. So wherever I know my freckles are, and I'm just gonna dot this over. Mainly for me, it's like on my upper cheekbones. Don't worry about it looking obvious at this point because we are gonna kind of make them look a little bit lived in. Just look more natural, really. So I have them all over my nose. See, I have seen what I'm doing now. I've seen this on people. Like, look how dark this looks. Like, look how dark this looks. Like, it's really obvious that I've drawn it in. Actually, it might not even look that obvious compared to some people, but I feel like this looks really obvious compared to how some people have it. Now, this is where this little trick here really helps. You wanna get your powder brush. This is the Real, Real Techniques powder brush and I've got my Makeup Forever Ultra HD powder here. And this is where we're gonna just go over. We're literally gonna go like that. This is gonna do two things. One, it's gonna lock this in And two, 
it's going to fade them slightly so it looks like it's just coming from within so now it doesn't look like okay she's drawn on top of her foundation now it looks like they're peeping through and it's actually her kind of freckles so that's a great way for you to kind of like have that nice look let your natural flaws come through but not have them look like you've drawn them in when they're actually your natural kind of flaws so the last hack that I want to show you is something that I do actually do myself sometimes because sometimes I can be a little bit heavy-handed when it comes to my brows so I want to just very quickly show you this I've got my brow pencil. Currently they're okay, right, my brows. But what happens if we go a little bit heavy handed and the color is fine, but it just doesn't look as natural. So if I actually just kind of draw in some extra hairs here, just with this pencil, I'm gonna show you how I will actually make this look a little bit more natural. Already that looks heavier to me, right? Let me show you. So now that we've made that a bit heavier, it's not as natural as the other side. This is what I do to make it look more natural. You're gonna get a concealer, something which is not warm. So it's a concealer which isn't too white and it's not thick. It's a very, this is a very light coverage concealer and it's very fluid. So I'm gonna get a lip brush and I'm gonna coat my lip brush with this. This I don't use this as a lip brush, by the way. I, I use this as a corrector, concealer brush. So I'm, I've coated it with a little bit of the concealer. Not enough that when I transfer it on the skin that is obvious, just a small amount. Now this is where I'm gonna make this brow look a bit more natural. I'm gonna just draw, we'll just kind of flick through my brow. See how already I'm using the tip of the brush. I'm just kind of creating hair strokes. So you're creating hair strokes with the concealer and it actually lightens your whole, and it actually lightens your whole brow. So like what you've done is you've kind of reverse, reversed what you've done. So because we were meant to actually apply hair strokes with the pencil, but maybe it was too thick, or maybe we've got, you know, we've done it a little bit too much. It, we've been a bit heavy handed with it. How do you then create those hair strokes, that initial look that you wanted without having to take it all off? Well, then what you're doing is creating the skin. Instead of actually adding color, you're, adding your skin back in. So we're just kind of like creating little gaps between the darkness that we applied so that it actually looks like hair strokes, which is what you initially wanted it to look like. So hopefully this has been an enjoyable video for you. You've learned a lot and you've learned some hacks that maybe you didn't know about before. I do want you to head over to the description because everything is listed in there and you can grab hold of whatever you want. Don't forget to let me know what other kind of like videos you wanna see via the comments. And also I wanna let you know that I do have an online publication called The Beauty Breakfast Club and that is basically an online publication. I write everything on there. There are articles written by me every week, a minimum of three a week. And there are two versions to this. So one is free, which means it, you have access to majority of the site. And then the other one is paid, which means it only costs you equivalent to a coffee a month and it gives you access to the entire site. Plus we have a chat room where I'm there, all the other paid subscribers are there and we all get to chat together and it's a really nice community and I would love you to join it because I answer loads of questions from people to there. And also I have a podcast, head over to Nina Ubi Vlogs, which is my other YouTube channel and I have a podcast on there, which is of me and my husband. It's called Minding Our Business. And we are also on Spotify as well, in case you just wanna listen and not watch. But I would love you to show some support. There's some really interesting topics that we talk about and you really just get to see us in our natural, <laughs> natural state so yeah i think you're gonna enjoy it if you like this video please do give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos until the next video take care and i'll see you soon